I am currently in high school, playing D&D with four of my friends, DMing for them. We have our campaign going for about three months now, and before playing, three of them have never heard of D&D. But now we play every weekend, and they all love it. There is another guy in my class who likes D&D and wanted to join. I asked the others, and we agreed. At the first session with him, he introduces his character and joins the party. Then he starts to interrupt everyone whenever he feels like we are doing something wrong. He stops me to tell me how my NPCs are too whack to be taken seriously, and take him out of the story. He tells the others how they are playing wrong, because no one in real life would talk like this. He starts to tell us midway in the session how our group is so close-minded, and that my world only has men in it. He tells me to watch some D&D shows, so I have a better idea on how to run a game. He pisses everyone off and argues with everyone, until one of my friends tells him to leave. Say he recommended you watch Critical Role without telling me he recommended you watch Critical Role. Listen, if you want someone to run a game like Matt Mercer, you bet your ass I'm going to expect that you play like Liam O'Brien. That is the new rule. My name is Jacob Crow, and welcome to the Crow's Perch, where I swoop into the trash heaps of r slash RPG horror stories in search of terrible, hilarious, and sometimes downright confusing stories that lie within. A death by a thousand cuts. Not just an old form of Chinese torture and a Taylor Swift song, but also the reason why this player is kicked. After a series of perceived slights, culminate in an absolute meltdown. So, without further ado, let's gather up the murder and do surgery on a grape as we cut open this next story. So, in late July of last year, I was approached by some co-workers who had heard I had DM'd for another group of co-workers some years prior, and they were wondering if I would DM for them. I told them that I would play a game of Dread with them to see if they enjoyed it, and if so, I would be willing to set up a campaign for them. I ran them through a story that was just a Friday the 13th knockoff, and the group loved playing it. So, as agreed, we had Session Zero, and I started setting up a campaign everyone was comfortable with. The important takeaway from Session Zero is that I was going to set up a sort of tutorial with various different types of challenges allowing the group to get a feel for the type of quests they would prefer to play. Social, deductive, combat, so on. Because I wanted to see what the group was interested in playing, I said that we would not run a session unless everyone was there. But this grace period was only going to last until they got to the first major town. This was a mistake. Also, to ensure I didn't stress myself out or run out of content to play, we agreed to meet up every other week for D&D, with the weeks between being for just hanging out, board games, movies slash TV watch parties, whatever. The cast is as follows, Don Air, a former co-worker and the person this story is about, Baggy, Macaria, and Balazar, co-workers of Don Air and I, also the ones who initially wanted to start playing D&D, Gimbal, a childhood friend of Don Air's. I had never met him before Session Zero, and while he's a great guy, he did cause some friction with the group, but not to the extent as Donair. He lives the furthest away from my apartment, but would get rides from Donair for the session. Bamfi, Macaria's boyfriend from college, who did not join the party until much later. He's a military veteran, who definitely saw some shit wherever he was deployed, and he needed a lot of encouragement from Macaria and Balazar to join us at the table. Charlie, a friend of Donair and Gimbal, who I've yet to actually meet. Due to some real-life issues and wanting to get a head start on planning for the upcoming sessions, we didn't actually get started playing until October. The first few sessions were glorious. Everyone showed up, everyone had a great time, Donair and Gimbal both bought metal dice and models for their characters. We had a few hiccups, but nothing that would deserve to be on r slash RPG horror stories themselves. Then Donair started missing sessions. 
He'd tell us it was extremely important family-related stuff, and then we'd find out he surprised his girlfriend for a date, or forget to go to the gym earlier in the day, and so would go when we agreed to play. He'd stop picking up Gimbal, forcing Balazar and Baggy to go out of their way to get Gimbal for the session. He'd bring his girlfriend along for a session, only for her to sit on her phone and then claim she was bored for not doing anything for four hours. He said he couldn't show up for the entire month of January because he was getting his wisdom teeth pulled, but went to the gym the same day they were pulled while high on surgery drugs. In February, Macaria had asked me if I'd allow Bamfi to join us, and I said yes, as I initially was prepared for a group of six, and Charlie had never gotten back to any of us about wanting to play or put in any effort whatsoever. I was able to have a session zero with Bamfi and get his character set up, but he made it clear that he wouldn't be able to make the next session due to an assignment he needed to do for college. I told him that was fine, and I told the group that we'd have to skip the next session then, though I didn't tell them why. They only had one combat encounter left in the dungeon they were in, and that was the perfect opportunity to introduce Bamfi's character. Late February, we got hit by a massive snowstorm, almost a foot of snow in some parts of the area. As the first person who actually goes into work in the morning, at an exhilarating 5 a.m., I get in at 9 a.m., through the snow, and get asked by everyone else if there's a point to make it into work that day. I said no. There's like 10 people here in total, and we're probably not going to be doing much of anything anyway. They wouldn't count the call-in against you. Donar, who has left the company at this point, proceeds to ask if I'm going to start bitching about not having anything to do at work as much as I do everything else? This takes me by surprise, and the two of us get into an argument. I give him two days to cool off, and ask him if everything is alright, because that sort of thing doesn't just come from nowhere. He starts going off on me with a paragraph the size of this post, with the points as follows. Number one, I'm a shitty coworker because I complain a lot about work. And I didn't talk to him one day he came back to work a shift. I asked the rest of my coworkers in our D&D group and in our friends miss group if I complain too much, to which I am told, not more than the rest of us. The not talking to him one day bit was actually 15 minutes of my eight hour shift because I was behind and wanted to focus on getting caught up. Number two, I'm a shitty friend because I was going behind his back to keep tabs on him. His girlfriend was telling Baggy and Macaria why he wasn't making sessions, and they were telling the group. The only thing I ever said to his girlfriend was, is he alright? He seems pissed about something. When he wouldn't talk to me during the day, point one happened, as she also works with us. Number three, I am a shitty host slash DM because I allowed Bamfi to join us but not Charlie, and wouldn't let him play the games he wanted during game night, and stole people's food. The games he wanted to play were Nemesis, a game that takes 10 minutes to set up, an hour or two to play, maxes out at 6 players. And we had 9 people showing up to play in the next 30 minutes. And Unstable Unicorns, a game he rage quit out of. As for stealing food, I would take a two fry fry tax whenever someone would show up to the game with McDonald's or similar. Okay, I'm stealing that. Look, all the player has to do is show up. The least you can do is share a couple of your damn fries. Perfectly reasonable DM. But look man, if you rage quit a game, I'm going to assume that game is a no-no for this group while you're around. At least until I see a massive shift in how you act in competitive games. You can't blame the DM for this one. That is all on you. To me, none of these issues look like substantial issues at all. But if we give this player the benefit of the doubt and assume they are, why not at least talk to the DM about it? 
If these negligible things are such an issue to him, why not speak up? That way, you can either work together to resolve it, or he knows that you're not a good fit for the group at the very least. It's infuriating that instead, this player feels the need to just quietly abandon the group by pretending they have prior obligations. You can only tell your DM you can't show up because your grandmother passed away so many times before they begin to question whether or not the CIA is cloning her or that you're lying. And until I see a compelling enough Pepe Sylvia board, I for one am going to assume the latter. But let's get to the end of this story. As for that last point, I told him that Charlie had not even made an attempt to show up for sessions or communicate with the group. Meanwhile, Bamfy had said he was willing to just sit and watch us play because he was interested in the game. The choice was pretty clear who to have sit at the table. Donaire then said that Bamfy forced us to miss a session. And how good for the table could he be at that point? I will fully admit I got heated when I pointed out that the reason we've had a single session all year was because Donaire himself almost never showed up anymore, specifically citing that he had found time to go to the gym while still high immediately after surgery. He responded with, Yes, I have priorities. What excuse does Banffy have? I immediately told him I didn't want him at my table anymore, and he left the Snapchat group. Gimbal went silent after I kicked Donaire out, and left the chat a week later as well. Myself, Macaria, Bamfy, Baggy, and Balazar are all looking forward to the next session, and the players have expressed some joy in being able to look forward to the game actually firing. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if two fries that this player didn't even bring, mind you, according to the comment section of this post, are the greatest of your problems, then my goodness, I don't know what to tell you, man. It seems like this player wanted the party to bend over backwards for him, while he contributed less and less to the game. It takes everyone's time, not just your own, to get a group going. To be this selfish comes across as childish. And if that's the case, why would any group in the right mind want to keep you around in the first place? I know plenty of people who go to the gym and play D&D and they work with their dungeon masters to make sure those times do not conflict. It takes a five, no, no two minute talk to avoid stories like this. And this player couldn't give enough of a damn to spare even that. But I think this is where we'll end today's stories. And if you like these stories and would like to see more of them, then consider cutting into that like button or hitting the falsetta notes on that subscribe button. Made it this far, why not leave a comment? Can't think of a comment? Then leave the comment, Thousand Cuts. So that way I know you made it to the end of today's video. But if you want to support the Crow's Perch even further, then you can join the Burb Aristocracy, either by clicking the Join button, or by following the link to my Patreon in the description down below. And join members like our Counts of Quills, like Raven, Tekris, Aaron Kados, Critical Kunik, Evix, King Drazil, Christian Pip, Cosmosis, Rikus, Jaded Gale, Haley Thompson, Zero Fang, and Netscape Navigator. But hey, there's a bird. What kind of bird? A bird that pays more. That kind of bird. Like Valison, Jonathan Fenton, Miss Tiger Beans, New Haven RP, Kieran Slater, Running Bear 2520. Ah, oh, that's a hard one. Uh, Running Bear 2525. Uh, Jinjin, oh, it's falling apart. Jinjin Ninja, uh, Haley McAuliffe, uh, Brittany Mars, Raytheon the Nerd, Sarah Warren, Spectre Spark, uh, Ours to Rock, Ghost Legan, Mr. Hypocritical, Jesse Shodell, Kuntos Weasel, Tech Blog, Currister, Cardespawn, Jester King, Lord Rand, Wormy, Dana the Drake, Mick Geatley, and Anya. You know, you want to pay, you want to pay more. You could, you could, uh, you could be a, be a, be a Duke of Feathers. That sounds pretty cool, right? Like, uh, like Remus, Grunt, Elf, Repetitive Debug, uh, Cray Card, Kive Mind, the School Bus, Quinn. He's, he's a cool guy. We like Quinn. 
uh, Jared Sewer, uh, Blues Otters, Doc Salty 96, can't forget about Doc Salty 96, uh, Matthew Mo Queenie, and uh, Acroth. And with all of that out of the way, I'll see you next time as the crow flies.